With an SUV-only product line, you run the risk of having some redundancy. But Land Rover has done a phenomenal job of differentiating their different models. If you want luxury, more specifically premium luxury, you go with the Range Rover Sport or the full-size Range Rover. If you want a luxurious vehicle at around sixty to seventy thousand dollars, you go with the Velar. If you want a rugged off-road SUV, you have the Defender. But what about the Discovery? Well, in today's video, we're going to take an in-depth look at this vehicle. We're going to take a look at the exterior, the interior, take it out for a test drive, and see why, if you're somebody who does like to go off-road, have some adventures, but you want to have a classy SUV that is comfortable and family friendly, then maybe going with the Discovery might be a great decision. Now, before I get in this video, I want to give a huge shout and thank you to McGovern Jaguar Land Rover of Peabody in Peabody, Massachusetts for allowing me to this review. The link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Jaguar and Land Rover inventory. Also, before we get started, make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you're notified every time a new video goes live on the channel. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. Land Rover's identity as being a high-end adventurous brand has traditionally placed this British manufacturer in a unique position, where they can tailor crossovers and SUVs that can go head-to-head -head with the Porsche Cayenne and Macan, BMW X5 and X7, and even rugged off-roaders like the Ford Bronco and Jeep Wrangler. The Discovery is Land Rover's take on the mid-sized luxury crossover market where its practicality and family friendliness makes it a worthy upgrade over a Velar or Discovery Sport. And for those who want to explore the past less traveled, they have an upscale companion that provides the finer things in life while still having the capability to be extremely versatile. Starting off with pricing, the Discovery we have today is the SE, coming in at just under $72,000. But if you're solely focused on upsizing, a base discovery will start just over 60 grand, but keep in mind you'll have the Turbo 4 instead of the inline 6. Where this SUV will be most valuable to shoppers is with its size, as not only its boxy dimensions provides an adequate amount of interior space, but you'll also have a functional third row if you have a larger family. Thanks to air suspension, when placed in an off-road mode, ground clearance comes in at just over 11 inches. And for highway cruising, the 8 inches of ground clearance is more than enough to take on snow-covered roads. Unlike the predecessors that came before it, this generation Discovery takes a different path in regards to the road presence and aligns itself with the rest of the lineup rather than being a modern iteration of the LR3 or LR4. While the Discovery nameplate is a separate product line from Range Rover, the rounder front fascia, sleek headlight housings, Aggressive fenders and bumper certainly shows its relation to the Range Rover Sport and even the Velar. The gloss black accents with the SE trim does add a lower profile look that some shoppers may appreciate in this SUV. Moving over to the side profile, we have the optional 20 inch wheels with a satin gray finish, which will most certainly be the choice for those who want to minimize road noise and prioritize comfort. You can choose 21s or a set of 22s if you prefer a more aggressive appearance. But the Discovery's ability to soak up the bumps and imperfections had a lasting impression, especially for a Land Rover priced below $100,000. You'll have gloss black side mirror caps with the SE to go along with blind spot detection for added safety. Then as you make a way around to the back, the boxy design does pay homage to the LR3 and LR4 while at the same time wearing the aesthetics that can be seen across the product line. What's always drawn attention for this generation is the placement for the rear license plate, but it's one of the unique characteristics that sets the Discovery apart from its siblings. As we've seen throughout, a full paint finish, including gloss black accents and a color matching rear diffuser, does give this SUV a classier persona, while dictating its sophisticated nature as opposed to the rugged attributes for the Defender. Under the hood, our Discovery is powered by a 3-liter turbocharged inline 6-cylinder engine, producing 355 horsepower and 368 pound-feet of torque, and is paired with a ZF 8-speed automatic transmission. By choosing the larger powertrain over the Turbo 4, you also receive a 48-volt mild hybrid system, 
further adding to the refinement and overall smoothness of this SUV, where accelerations are linear and gear shifts are crisp. Having experienced this engine from Land Rover numerous times throughout the last few years, this is the sweet spot for the brand and will likely captivate shoppers, as its 6.3 second 0-60 time should satisfy those with a lead foot, despite the Discovery's primary focus on being both luxurious and rugged. Obviously for an SUV that's designed for different types of terrain, all-wheel drive does come standard, which provides the right amount of versatility for a family SUV. And when it pertains to fuel economy, you're looking at right around 19 miles per gallon in the city and 25 miles per gallon on the highway. Once you step inside, it's the interior that truly sets a tone for the Discovery, letting you know it's a completely different offering compared to the Fender and Velar as you're greeted by soft touch materials found throughout the cabin, which provides an upscale and high-end luxury driving environment. Our model today has a 20-way power adjustable front seats, finished in a light oyster and ebony Windsor leather upholstery, with both the driver and passenger having memory seat functionality. This nearly $2,000 upgrade also tacks on ventilation to those front seats for added coolness during the summer. In front of you, will be a full digital gauge cluster, with a number of different configurations to customize what is being displayed. Much like we're seeing from many competitors in this market, you can showcase the navigation map, or go for a more minimalist design to eliminate distractions when behind the wheel. Then moving over to the infotainment system, this is Land Rover's latest Pivi Pro user interface, with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility. Functioning very much like a tablet, this is exclusively a touchscreen with icons mounted to the left to quickly get you to different menus. While there will be a bit of a learning curve at first if this is your first Land Rover product, the menu layout and functionality is similar to some German competitors. While you can access the front and rear climate control settings from this screen, there are physical dials and touch sensitive buttons that control the fan speed, AC, front and rear defrosters, and three level heated and ventilated seats. Helping to park the Discovery, you'll have front and rear cameras to go along with a 3D surround view, providing the optimal amount of visibility from all sides for this vehicle. Below, you'll find a wireless phone charging pad and a cubby to store some smaller items. Then for the center console, you'll find the dial for the drive mode selector, where you can scroll from eco and comfort to off-road modes to tackle the elements you may encounter on your journeys. For the center storage compartment, Optional, this space can be refrigerated with the $2,100 Comfort Pack, which is useful as you can fit some smaller water bottles in this cubby. Then around out the front seating area, above will be a panoramic moonroof, which will let in a lot of natural light to the interior. Quickly taking a look at the second row, working in the Discovery's favor is the high roof line, as you can easily accommodate average size adults but also, thanks to the width of this vehicle, it's most certainly possible to squeeze in a third person. Also back here, you have two rear air vents to go along with the heated outboard seats. An optional would be four zone climate control, which will keep everyone comfortable during long road trips throughout the year. And for passengers in the third row, hopefully you guys can see me back here. I wanna do this very quick. Surprisingly, it's not that bad. I don't feel as cramped or as claustrophobic as it looks and that is actually rather remarkable now because we do have the third row seats up this does come at the expense of cargo space you're not going to fit a lot behind the third row seats as we're going to find out in a minute but honestly if you could try squeezing in smaller kids in the third row i think it could definitely work now you're not going to be carrying a lot of luggage with you but on a day trip it, it's most certainly doable now, I'm not the tallest person out there, I'm around 5'5", five five, but I can move my legs around with these seats adjusted all the way back, and that's pretty impressive. Also, another thing too is that these seats are heated, and that is something you don't typically see in this market. So if you are looking for a vehicle with a third row that can accommodate smaller kids while you have average size adults sitting in the second row, the Defender is actually an interesting option and an unlikely choice in this segment. And then as we make our way around to the back, you are going to receive a power lift gate. 
And inside, behind the third row seats, you're looking at right around nine cubic feet of room. And that right there is the story. Most likely, you're not gonna be fitting anything back there. I was able to fit one camera bag or two, but that was basically it. If you do have occupants in the third row, don't plan on fitting any cargo back there. However, where the Discovery is at its best is being a two row crossover in SUV. Because behind the second row of seats, you're looking at right on 45 cubic feet of room, and that's better than a lot of vehicles in this market. So if you don't necessarily need that third row, you don't have any plans of having kids in the back, then this is going to be a great two row option and it's going to be very practical and versatile. If you're going on a road trip with the family, maybe you're going skiing and snowboarding, you can fit all your equipment back here, no problem. So as you can tell, I have all my camera gear back here on top of a couple floor mats and another box. So that's three bags of camera gear, a gimbal box and a tripod, and there's plenty more room to store other items as well. And that right there is where the Discovery is at its best. And that's one of its strengths because it does have that higher roof line. It does have that boxier shape. So if you're looking for a vehicle that is luxurious but also practical, take a look at the Discovery. But if you need to have that third row, I would say go with the Defender 130. And then finally with the second row of seats folded, you're looking at right around 74.3 cubic feet of room. Once again, falling in line with a lot of vehicles in this market. But more importantly, on the left side of the rear cargo area, you will have a panel of buttons where you can fold the third row and second row automatically, but also you can do all this with a press of one button. So if you are loading this vehicle up with a lot of gear, you can do that very quickly and seamlessly. Also, you can lower the rear suspension so that way if you do have longer items or heavier items, you don't have to worry about scratching the paint on the rear bumper. And then not installed on our model today, but it is back here, is your rear cargo cover, which will keep all your valuable items out of sight. So if you are like me and you have camera gear or anything else of value, you can leave them back here and have that peace of mind knowing that no one will be able to peek in and steal what you have. And finally, once you're done, just press the button and the lift gate will close automatically. So we're now behind the wheel of the 2024 Land Rover Discovery. Let's take this SUV out for a quick test drive to see how it performs, how it handles, how it drives, how it compares to other vehicles in this segment, but also more importantly, how it slots into the product line. The Land Rover brand has really intrigued me over the last few years because up and down their entire line, you have some great options, whether it is the Range Rover Sport, the Velar, the Defender, or the full-size Range Rover. But the Discovery is rather intriguing from the standpoint that it's a rugged SUV, but it's also very luxurious. And the fact that it balances both and has both attributes is something that we don't typically see in this market because traditional competitors would be the BMW X5, Audi Q7, Porsche Cayenne. On the pricing spectrum, you'd probably compare it to maybe a Macan as well. But because of its size, because you do have the ability to have three rows, it is a vehicle that would be more of a mid-sized luxury SUV. Now, the critics would say that with this vehicle that the driving dynamics are not sporty or aggressive. But if you're somebody who's looking at buying a Land Rover or has owned Land Rover products in the past, you're more of a niche buyer. You're looking for specific characteristics and qualities in your daily driver. What really works in the Discovery's favor is that it's really one of the only options in this price range that you could take off-road, but you could also drive in the city and suburbs as well. While there are people who like taking their Cayennes off-road, it's not very likely. Most people are looking for a sportier experience if you are going in the Cayenne or maybe even in the X5 M60 direction. What I have noticed so far is that ride quality and suspension is tuned very much for comfort. Even with the larger tires, you don't really hear that much road noise. You're not really feeling a lot of the bumps and imperfections. It's a very high quality experience. Now again, you are sacrificing the performance for that on-road comfort, for that upscale driving experience. And I think that the criticisms towards this vehicle have been very much unfair. Now compared to the Defender, this does feel a bit more 
crossover like, although you do sit pretty high up in this vehicle. I mean, you have a nice commanding feel and presence over the roadways. Your amount of vision you have here to work with, with your nice panoramic view, the A pillars are super thin. You have aggressive side mirrors. You can see what's in your blind spots. And even though looking out back with the headrest in the way that does create a bit of a blind spot looking straight behind you, I can see what's behind me. And I think a lot of people who are looking for a family SUV might find this very appealing, not only because it is luxurious, you also have that safety because you are sitting pretty high up in this vehicle. Now, on these back roads, you do feel the weight transfer. It does not have a lower center of gravity. It feels very different compared to a Velar and also the Range Rover Sport. But the difference here between the Discovery and the Defender is that the Defender does feel like a body-on-frame SUV, whereas this is far more dailyable, even with the inline six. You barely hear the powertrain when you are cruising on the back roads at around 35, 40 miles an hour. And also I find that when it comes to interior insulation, it's very quiet in here. You have a nice isolated feel behind the wheel. And while that is something that you will experience from other competitors as well, it's all gonna boil down to its capability, its versatility. That you're going to have that confidence that if you are taking on some dirt roads or maybe you are going off-road to camp or just spend some time outdoors, that this is capable of doing that. It can get you through deep snow, deep mud, and you're gonna feel compelled to do so. Whereas with an Audi Q7 or a BMW X5, most likely not. But since this is an on-pavement, an on-road review, Compared to its rivals, there's one distinct difference here. And that is that just like every other Land Rover product, it's not going to prioritize having a heavier steering, having a stiff suspension, or being an SUV that really puts you back in your seat, or is an SUV that you're going to be really pushing in the corners. This is more of a status symbol, yes, but it's also, in my mind, a high-end luxury vehicle under $100,000. And because it has the attributes of being an SUV, of being an off-road worthy vehicle, it would be a great alternative to a Ford Bronco or a Jeep Wrangler. Now, most likely, if you are looking at those two SUVs and off-roaders, you're probably going with the Defender. For those who are returning Land Rover and Range Rover owners, maybe you're looking to upsize from your Velar, maybe your Discovery. What I will say here, at least for the mod that we have today, this does feel like a solid upgrade over that Velar. The Velar is a nice compact crossover, especially when you're comparing it to an X3, Porsche Macan, Audi Q5, but I also know that most of you who are looking at buying a Defender, you're probably not looking at purchasing any other brand. And that's one thing I think a lot of critics tend to overlook, that this isn't the mainstream market where you can easily sway somebody out of a Toyota to go to a Honda, or even for BMW and Audi or Mercedes-Benz, that you can sway people to different brands. If you're looking at buying a Land Rover or Range Rover, most likely you're not deviating away from this brand. So if you are looking to upgrade, the big difference here from that Discovery Sport or the Velar is that the quality and the refinement is far more noticeable. Not only are you getting a vehicle that's more spacious, practical, and versatile, you're also receiving an SUV under $100,000 that in my mind, for what it is, for what it's offering, if we're gonna talk about its versatility, its year-round capability, I think it is a solid choice. I, I really do. And while you may not have the weighted steering, the stiff suspension, or that performance and dynamic driving experience that you're gonna find with the X5 M60, I think for those who are looking for a vehicle that 
is a jack of all trades that maybe leans a bit more towards the luxury side of things rather than being rugged, that's where I think the Discovery is a great choice. <laughs> you feel that body roll. And we're up to highway speeds. Now, I gotta say, I am genuinely impressed with how this feels on the road. It's so soft, so smooth, and it's really comfortable. Now, you don't really feel a lot of connection to the road because you don't have a sports tuned suspension. You also have a very high center of gravity. But for an SUV of this size and weight, this is genuinely impressive. And also with a boxier shape, and it's a windy day today, you don't hear a lot of road noise. You don't hear a lot of wind noise. This is really nice. I envision people going on road trips to New Hampshire, Maine, Vermont during the winter to ski and snowboard. But also if you're going on that summer vacation, you have all that interior space. You have a lot of cargo room. You can have your family join you. And you look good doing all of that. When you pull up to maybe some town along the seacoast or maybe when you're pulling up to the lodge, this has a nice presence to it. I know when it first came out, people didn't like it, but because Land Rover has really embraced the rugged SUV look, it's what they've always done, but also now with their middle offerings, with the Discovery, with the Defender, these vehicles have kind of become the face of the brand. And I think between the two, because you could cross up both at around $80,000, you have two choices. You have a vehicle that you can really throw around, that you can be a bit abusive with, or you can go with the more classier option. You can go with the more country club aesthetic with the Discovery over the Defender. And that's what I think makes these vehicles honestly a great buy for those who have specific tastes that you're not going to necessarily get this from Porsche you're not going to get this from BMW Audi or Mercedes-Benz especially if you're cross shopping this with a GLE the GLE feels like a tank although this kind of feels big too but if you're hopping into a Discovery for the first time its maneuverability its size its handling will be very easy to adapt to in a very short period of time. So to wrap up my time with the 2024 Land Rover Discovery, what are my final thoughts and takeaways for this rugged yet luxurious SUV? When you're in a market and you're going head to head with the Porsche Cayenne, BMW X5, Mercedes-Benz GLE, and Audi Q7, obviously you're gonna be compared in regards to performance and handling. And that's not the Discovery's strongest suit. When you're spending at around $80,000 for a Land Rover, it's for a good reason. It's for a specific reason. As you've already discussed during the test drive, you're a niche buyer. You're not looking at buying a BMW. You don't want a Mercedes-Benz. You don't want an Audi. You want something that's special and also a vehicle under $100,000. And that's what you have here with the Discovery. Now, within the Land Rover lineup, the Discovery does diverge a bit in regards to its on-road performance and handling characteristics, but also just its attributes and its persona on the roadways. Because compared to the Defender, the Defender is rugged. Even the Range Rover Sport, it can be rugged, but also it's sporty. So for the Discovery, this is more of a laid-back approach to an off-road market that really Porsche... BMW, Audi, and Mercedes-Benz aren't necessarily tailoring to. And while automotive media publications and journalists have had their criticisms towards this vehicle, if you are somebody who is spending around $80,000 and you want a family-friendly SUV, but also on with the prestigious badge on the hood, that's what the Land Rover Discovery is going to be that choice. Because with the inline six, you do have 
the performance in a straight line. You have a vehicle that does feel very composed on the roadways in regards to its suspension softness and just the fact that it is very fairly friendly in that regard. But you also have a vehicle that is practical, capable, and versatile. And we have to look at what this vehicle offers compared to what it doesn't offer. Yes, it's not going to be this sporty and aggressive vehicle like a Porsche Cayenne, maybe with the V8. But with the powertrains available for this model with the four cylinder and six cylinder, it's a solid choice for somebody who wants a prestigious and upscale SUV that is specialized, that is unique, but also one that gives you the creature comforts that you're looking for in this market. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Boston Auto Blog so you can see what I'm up to and what vehicles I'll be featuring in the future. And I will see you guys next time.